So if you purchased the ChatGPT snapshot from me and you have been wanting to upload PDFs or custom files to your GPT bot, today is your day. So you can now add PDFs and custom files to your ChatGPT bots, and this can be used for handling objections. So you can create a simple document with common objections that you get and how you want the bot to respond. And then you can also use this for frequently asked questions as well as customer support. And ultimately, you can give the bot way more context and data about your business in PDF form. So if you have documentation or PDFs about your business, you can basically upload those directly to your bot. So the bot will have a combination of prompt instructions as well as files that it can now retrieve. So if you purchase the bot from me, these instructions have already been updated here in the course. So I'm going to click on this and just walk you through, you know, what's changed and how to implement the changes. So you're inside of the course right here and you'll see it says November 17th update. And there is now this video module, which you're watching of me right here called mini course update. And basically there's three simple things that have changed within um, you know, the setup to making this work. So I've already created the Tango instructions for these, so it makes it super easy for you guys to follow along. So the first step is you have to now create a PDF enabled bot. So the bot up until this point was pretty much just prompt instructions and a specific GPT model. Now you have to create a PDF enabled bot. So let me walk you through what this means. So now instead of creating your bot inside of the Zap uh, you know, template, you're basically gonna create it inside of OpenAI now. So you're gonna click on assistance and you're gonna create a new bot and you're gonna type your bot's name here. You're gonna type in your prompt or copy paste your prompt. And then you're gonna choose your model here. So I have access to the most recent model. So if you don't see this one here, it's not a big deal. Just choose GPT-4 or whichever model you are currently on. And then click on check highlight. And you're gonna to need to turn on code interpreter. And you're gonna to need to turn on retrieval. And you're gonna to need to turn on files, okay? Once you've done that, you'll be able to upload your own PDF files right there to your bot. So that's step one to transitioning to this new GPT system, okay? The second step is you're going to now change the way that you map your webhook fields within step two of Zapier. So it's pretty simple. So let me close these out. So inside of your Zap, instead of the original event, which was called conversation, okay, let me zoom in. So the original event was called conversation, okay? What you're gonna do now is change the event. If you want to do this, right? If your system's working fine, no need to do this. And if you do wanna do this, but you're not quite sure yet, I would recommend duplicating your existing Zapier template and then making the necessary changes there. That way you can you know, make sure it works well and then you can update your, your active version. But I would never recommend just changing your active version, especially if you have a lot of leads going through it because that'll just cause complications. So you're gonna change the event from conversation to now this new event called conversation with assistant, okay? And you click on this one. And then what you're gonna do is just simply map the fields the same way you did up until this point. It's just a little bit different. So now you're gonna see a message field and you're gonna map the same field that you did before. So this one's gonna be custom data, GPT, user response message, okay? And then for the next one, or this is kind of breaking down literally step by step. So you choose custom data, GPT, user response message, and then from there, you'll close that one out. And if you guys ever need to zoom out on the Tango, you guys can just zoom out right there, okay? Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna now choose from the assistance that you just created. So if you just created one, right, you will see when you click on assistant and you click on the, um, you know, there's a little drop down here and it'll pull that new assistant you created, okay? So now you're kind of linking your, your pre-configured assistant to the workflow versus before you pretty much created the bot in the workflow. So this is a way better uh, way of doing it. So now you can click on the assistant name. So this is same process of naming the actual assistant right here in the workflow. Like I said, you can zoom out right there, okay? And then this is just showing you step by step. So my custom data assistant name is Jackie. So that's basically gonna go here. And then you just close out that once you've mapped that successfully. All right, and then for the assistant instructions, you can just uh, basically type something super simple here, like you are, help, you are a helpful and resourceful assistant because the actual instructions, right, the prompt is gonna be done on the back end now, okay? So you can just type something simple here and then save that and close it. Now, for your model, you're just gonna wanna choose the same model that you chose when you created the actual assistant in the other uh, part of the you know, setup that I showed you right here and just choose the same one. Now this is where it's a little bit different. So you're gonna see these two new things here called tools. 
and you have two options. You can choose from retrieval, which is what you're going to need when people are asking you questions about a document like a PDF. And then you're going to have another one called code interpreter, analyze structured data like a CSV. You may not need that, um, but you can turn that one on as well. And so basically, when you have them both selected, it'll look like this. All right. And then now your memory key is now called conversation ID. And basically, you're going to map the same field, which is the contact ID. And this is obviously from the webhook. So I just type in contact ID there, map it accordingly, and then close. And then just zoom out here so you guys can see what everything looks like from there. And then just basically click on continue. And then you're just going to want to retest the step to make sure, you know, that the, that the workflow was successful. Okay. So that's the second step. So step one is to create a PDF enabled bot first. Now in step two, you change your event, remap the fields, and then link the bot to step two. All right. Step three is you now have to slightly change. It's just one field you change in step three of the zap. So if you guys know in the, um, you know, when you map the fields here, you map the name, right? So if you already have a published version, you just click edit draft and then click edit existing draft and then click on this third step right here, okay? Which is your, when you send the, the response to go high level. So now you're gonna scroll down to action. You don't change the event. It's still add update contact, uh, contact. You only change one little field. So where it says GPT assistant response message, this uh, was response and now it's gonna be full response, full response, all right? And then you can type that in there if you need to actually you know, select from it. Uh, or you can type in full response here so it makes it easier to select that value instead of searching for it manually. And then make sure you select it and then just click uh, close and publish. So that is basically how you can link up. Same snapshot, nothing changes. All you gotta do is make those three simple changes and your bot will now have access to PDF documentation um, and any file you upload. And like I said, I've been testing it. It works great, makes it way easier actually for the prompting. So that's the update for now and I'll see you guys soon.